I really didn't want to have to make this video. Lonerbox is a creator I really respected, both for his on-stream personality and his long-form scripted content. He's really good at explaining things clearly and calmly, and has made some great videos pushing back against right-wing bullshit like Matt Walsh's What is a Woman documentary. I think he's been a genuine force for good in the online left, and has earned his position among stream and essay personalities through having legitimately good content, which is why making this video is so disappointing for me. On October 20th, someone in Polly People's chat let her know that Lonerbox was on stream saying there wasn't a genocide of trans people happening in the US. Polly disagreed, so she joined his stream chat and he invited her to talk on stream. I think the following clip does a good job of illustrating both Lonerbox's and Polly People's basic thesis statements for this debate. I do know that uh, denying trans people healthcare will, will kill them. Mm -hmm. And that's the intent, to kill trans people by making life unlivable. Okay, so then again, so now you, so when you, when you say intent like that, it sounds like you are appealing to stay within like a definition. So uh, yeah, I wouldn't. So, again, like, so what do you mean? with religion? I, I just to be clear, I didn't. I said what's happening to Muslims in the UK is not enough for a genocide. It's systemic discrimination. It's uh, state. Like, it's abusive and all that. Yeah. Um, I said what happened in China is more clearly like cultural genocide because the intent is there to destroy the religion. It's there and they're putting, and they're, the state is actually seizing people and putting them into education camps that they can't leave and forcing them to change their like cultures. That's why the, the threshold is just so much higher. So that's why I'm kind of analogizing British Muslims more because I don't think that's a genocide. But again, the intent to kill people, that, that would put the burden on you. I don't think there's any uh, written statements from people and like saying that we're trying to get rid of trans healthcare and trans education rights and all that because we want to kill trans people, right? He says that only two states have passed laws banning trans healthcare for minors and that one was struck down. In reality, four states, Alabama, Arkansas, Texas, and Arizona, have passed laws banning some kind of medical prevention for trans youth, whether that's a ban on surgeries for trans youth or a full ban on all gender-related care, such as HRT and puberty blockers. Missouri, though its healthcare ban seems to be currently stuck in committee, considered extending the age limit from 18 up to 25 meaning legal adults who could vote and rent a car and go to war would be considered too young to be allowed to have transition-related materials. This is them showing their hand. They want to extend it past 25 until they can reasonably ban it outright. Moreover, denial of healthcare isn't the end-all be-all of what constitutes a genocide, despite it being a major component. Part 1. Where it starts. As of writing, 18 different states in the U.S. have a ban on trans feminine athletes competing against their cisgender peers. These bans, like the bills banning medical intervention, are excused by a desire to quote-unquote protect a group supposedly negatively affected by the inclusion of trans people, namely women's sports. Republicans claim they want to keep trans women out of women's leagues because our quote innate biological advantage over cis women would lead women's sports to eventually be dominated by trans feminine athletes. I'm not going to spend my time explaining why that's incorrect, because tons of people have gone over this argument before, and I'm not looking to just regurgitate their points. If you're interested in knowing why there's basically no reason to bar trans women from women's sports, I would recommend giving Jesse Gender's videos on the subject to watch. The point of these athletics bans isn't to kill trans people. Not in any direct way, that is. The goal of these particular bills is to other trans people, to make them seem alien and aberrant and unworthy of equal treatment. You can see this in the way the conversations around trans athletes are worded by conservatives. Trans women are invading women's sports, dominating the leaderboards, and all of this is intentional. These trans athletes have malice ascribed to them, with the right wing insisting this is a deliberate attempt to undermine Western civilization and weaken our perception of the division of the sexes, when in reality trans athletes want what all athletes want, to play their sport. These bans not only usually come as a response to a particular athlete performing well, making them the subject of unimaginable levels of online hate, and are enacted in an attempt to push any trans person who might get a spotlight for their achievements into a self-imposed obscurity for their own protection. In short, they are making trans athletes' lives more difficult and ending their prospective careers on a legislative level. Part 2. Do they mean it though? In the debate with Polly People, she asked Lonerbox if he agreed that even if there isn't an active genocide happening right now, that there is at least genocidal intent on the side of the GOP. Lonerbox's response was... 
weird. So is that what it would take? The law would have to say, uh, we would like to, uh, our, our goal is to kill trans people? That's... Well, you said that, though, you said that the intent is there. This argument is completely incoherent because it ignores, either intentionally or accidentally, the well-known fascist tactic of dog whistling. Republican politicians don't need to say, we have to remove trans people from society or let them roadblock themselves outright when they can just call us groomers, pedophiles, and fearmonger about us corrupting innocent cis children through social contagion. The message this sends to their base and to the trans people who exist around them is clear. We don't believe trans people are worthy of dignity or a life free from discrimination. And in fact, we believe discriminating against them through law or through acts of physical and emotional violence is morally correct. On another note, what serious politician who hopes to be reelected would ever verbally and explicitly say they want to kill trans people, especially in a period where their political party isn't even the one in power? Regardless of their intentions, which I obviously agree are genocidal, doing so when you don't control the government is political suicide. Doing a little bit of transphobia is very popular among the right wing, but overall the American people are overwhelmingly against the anti-trans laws being passed already. Even registered Republicans are majority against anti-trans bills being put forth by the party. If a political figure like Greg Abbott or Ron DeSantis said they were passing a law for the express purpose of making sure more trans people died, that would go over phenomenally poorly with everyone but their most devoted base. They're passing the laws they're passing because at the moment, that's the most they can do. But because of reasons? If they get reelected, they're prepared to make it legally impossible for them to ever lose again, at which point they can pass whatever laws they want, no matter what their voters think. The last point I want to get into to show Lonerbach's genocidal intent is to ask him this. Do you think the law not getting passed erases the harm? Part 3. The cruelty is the point. One of the main goals of a lot of these bills is not to actually legally affect anyone's lives. Politicians will propose these laws knowing they will lose their votes, or be vetoed or overturned. That's almost immaterial to them. Sometimes it's even part of the plan so they can bellyache to their base about the will of the people being overthrown by a tyrannical government hell-bent on grooming your children. No, the main goal of so many of these bills isn't to become laws, but to become headlines. I would argue that the majority of anti-trans legislation isn't made to be passed right now. The point is to say to trans people reading the headlines, we see you, and we're not going to make life easier for you. We're going to make it immeasurably harder the first chance we get. The point is to make trans children feel so ashamed and scared of what living as trans would be like under these laws that they either get back in the closet or they commit suicide. The point is to make doctors so afraid of legal or physical backlash that they start refusing to treat kids with HRT before any laws even get enacted, just to be safe. The Republicans introduced a way more comprehensive don't say gay bill on a federal level just to tease it for their base and to scare the shit out of LGBTQ people all over the country. They don't care about bettering Americans' lives. They care about consolidating power and using it to hurt the people they hate. This is clear genocidal intent, if not threats of imminent genocidal action if that power is ever seized again. Part 4. Detransitioning Lonerbach claims he understands, quote, as well as he can, how difficult it is to live as and be referred to as a gender different from the one you identify as. He cites having trans friends and a trans partner who have given him insight on this aspect of the trans experience. But Lonerbox, understanding as well as you can obviously has not been enough. You don't understand how it feels to have to consider detransitioning. It feels like you're conspiring to murder someone, the part of you that has any chance at happiness. Have you never heard the phrase detransitioning is death? Only about 1% of people who medically transition in any way regret their decision, and most of those people decide to detransition, which is the right choice for them. The other 99% of people who medically transition continue because that's what makes them happy, what allows them to feel confident enough to see people and have social lives. You know, the things we need as social animals that were just kind of wither away. I don't know how Lonerbox can say that the extent of what the GOP has done over the last few years doesn't amount to genocidal intent at the very least. 
They very clearly want us dead or back in the closet, but because Lonerbox doesn't seem to realize that being forced back in the closet is violence, and because no Republican politician is saying, I'm passing this law to kill people, Lonerbox doesn't believe it's happening? Part 5. Historical Precedent and Conclusion Lonerbox said he would define the Holocaust as a genocide only after 1941, when the final solution was enforced. But someone in Poly People's chat said it best. The final solution wasn't the start of the genocide. The first concentration camp in Germany was built in 1933. The Kristallnacht happened in 1938. This is how liberalism gives way to fascism. By ignoring clear genocidal intent as long as it's done through legal channels, and as long as nobody is advocating directly for violence. The problem is, when parties like the Nazis or the modern day GOP gain enough power that they can change the laws such that they will never lose that power again, the liberals are too late. By excusing clear genocidal intent as misguided protectionism, the liberals hold water for the fascists until the exact moment they're no longer needed and will then be removed from the political sphere altogether. Altogether, this was a really disappointing debate to watch from Lonerbox. I truly hope he's just misinformed because he lives in the UK, is a cis guy, and just generally doesn't know what it's like to be trans in the US during and after the Trump era. I really want to give him the opportunity to listen to trans people who know what it's like, and I hope he can come away from those conversations realizing the harm the rhetoric he was using can cause, and eventually apologize, both to poly people for his frankly horrible treatment of her in the debate, and to his wider trans audience who he's hopefully having these conversations with.